blog post number three. So identify needed resources or skills needed to obtain the proper resources. Well, you're going to have to have administrative skills and interpersonal skills. Uh, my scoring on the evaluation, I scored 29, 26, and 28. So I scored very high in administrative, interpersonal, and conceptual. And honestly, I think a little bit of all of these are going to have to be combined in properly staffing a unit. Uh, you, everyone knows you can't just go to administration and say, give me this number of resources. And you don't want to just pull a number out of the air. So what do you have to do? You have to look at your patient population on your unit, their acuity level, you have to look at the staff you have available, and you have to look at their skill level and how many patients they can care for, how many nurses do you have, how many nurse aides do you have, how many secretaries, you know, just the whole gamut depending on what uh, type of unit you're running. A patient classification system is something that chapter 14 spoke quite a bit about. And I think this is very important because if you ask me off the top of my head, I think we all want someone who's been in the trench with us and done our job determining appropriate acuity levels. We don't want someone who's never taken care of a patient in their life pretending to know how many nurses it takes to do the job. So an individual with experience could walk in and say, hey, okay, they need this many or this many. But that's probably not going to be enough to satisfy administration. So you need a proper identified classification system where you can look at each patient, identify their acuity level, and put them into a category where they, you know, maybe you, so four of these patients can be taken care of by one nurse, or maybe there's such a low acuity that six of them could be taken care of. Or maybe like ICU is two to one and sometimes even one to one. But you have to have a defined system that's approved by your administration where you can evaluate your patient population, establish your needs, back that up, and deliver that to your administration. And hopefully if your administration has the nursing staff and the client's best interest, then they will follow up by providing you the appropriate staff you need. So you're going to have to have interpersonal skills to work with your staff and to work with the administrative people. You're going to have to have administrative skills to make all of this happen, to put the plan together, to develop the evidence, to deliver it to your, uh, your administration higher-ups and convince them that you uh, have, have an effective plan, period. Maybe that's not the best way to say it, but I think I got my point across. Number two, question two was about uh, published work. Well, when I think of published work, I think of EVP or evidence-based practice. I would, when I wanted a policy change or if I had a new plan for my unit, I would hope to be able to back it up with research that had been peer-reviewed and that had been shown to actually be effective. And I think this would help the staff to know, oh, hey, he's not just pulling these ideas out of his ear or he's just not coming out of this out of left field. This is that he's actually put the time in put the research in to make sure that the changes that would like to be implemented are going to make all of our lives better. The article I read from spoke about uh, musculoskeletal pain in patients and how a multidisciplinary pro approach had helped to deal with this. It mentioned that uh, concept, the concept of teamwork was developed in the 1980s. Uh, instead of the old form, the old approach of each one person doing everything, it uh, came about from research and it makes a whole lot of sense that when you have a patient with multiple illnesses or even with one illness that requires different approaches, expecting one person to be a master of every area is just not realistic. So they brought in uh, pharmaceutical experts to, or pain management experts to deal with the pain aspect of the musculoskeletal problem. They brought in physical rehabilitation, PT, OT people to deal with the functionality that the person may have lost and was seeking to regain. And they brought in uh, therapists for psychosocial, for group uh, therapy, for individual therapy. And together, each of these individuals, they were trained to be experts in their field and they were able to come together and sort of provide well-rounded uh, efficient, really, truly multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary care for the patient, and it showed to be very effective. The link to this article will be posted on my blog post if you'd care to read it. Thank you.
Number three asks what levels and what departments I would have to communicate with to be effective in my role. Well, the role I actually work now as a clinical strategist, I oversee projects for EMR implementation. And these are multi-month projects for each clinic. And one of the last phases is obviously the actual implementation. And one of my responsibilities is uh, coming up with how many resources are going to be needed to appropriately support the staff during the implementation. So you could kind of look at it like as a nurse manager in a clinic, I would be coming up with staff to support the patients, to care for the patients. And this is kind of just a different level. I'm looking for staff to support the actual clinicians, whether they be doctors, nurses. In the clinic I'm in now is a uh, pediatric genetic uh, metabolic disorder clinic. So we have genetic counselors, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have MAs, secretaries. So I have to evaluate the number of clinicians I have. I have to determine how many resources are needed to support each of these people during our implementation. And I have to put this out in a spreadsheet, put it out in a way that's understandable and legible and makes sense. And I have to submit a request for support for this uh, this time period. So I have to work with my own team, I, you know, my project manager, my business analyst, we look at the picture, we look at the uh, degree of change that's taking place for the particular clinic and their current level of knowledge and the level of practice they're going to and how much support they're going to require. I have to submit this to my executives who have to look at cost, and funding and just resources. We're always struggling with not having enough resources. So I have to deal with the executive level of my department. Um, one of the interesting dynamics is there's three individuals that are on what I would call that executive level that I report to. Two of them in former lives did the job I do. They were in the trench, they got their hands dirty once upon a time and they moved up to their positions now. And one of them never did. Uh, the contrast between communicating with the two that have done the job and the one who hasn't couldn't be more of a night and day contrast. That being said, I don't get to choose, unfortunately, who I answer to all the time. So I have to develop the skills. And a lot of it comes through just experience to be able to effectively communicate my needs not only to the ones who are pretty easy to persuade, but I have to be able to effectively communicate these needs to those who are more skeptical and who are always wanting to push back, never want to give you enough resources. It's always a wrestling match to get what you need, but you can't just throw up your hands and quit. And uh, I have had to grow and I appreciate the opportunity to have grown tremendously in that aspect on this job alone over the last two years. So number four, do I prefer horizontal zonal, or vertical uh, approach? Well, I was having trouble getting this together, so finally I just wrote down an outline for what I wanted to say. Judging from what I read in chapter six, I really ended up uh, feeling a bit differently than I thought I would. I thought it would just be all horizontal because that just that sounds good, right? Everybody does uh, their own thing, a lot of autonomy. Well, I think one thing that needs to improve and it makes nurses happier is when they do have more autonomy and when they feel like they're able to, you know, go in and take care of their patients and function with a certain amount of independence, along with their teammates, of course. Uh, there's a, I feel like there's a balance there in the line you have to walk. But horizontal, according to the reading, you have less rigid controls, greater freedom for employees, but you have less availability to communicate with your managers. So greater freedom, more autonomy, it all sounds great, but where do you draw the line? Uh, you know, one of the, it also, the, the reading talks about tall or vertical structure, and a couple of the things it said was it's commonplace in healthcare and for a good reason, because there's so much responsibility and so much diversity in what we have to do and so many legal ramifications and just the type and the nature of work we do in general. I, one of the good things I thought is that it provides greater control and oversight of employees' activities, which seems, uh, I guess it seems kind of like direct conflict with each other. On one side, you're given more independence, and on the other side, you're given greater control. Well, I think there has to be a balance. 
And honestly, after reading it, I tend to lead more toward a vertical system simply because maybe this is an exaggeration, but you don't want one nurse reading an article one day and deciding that washing hands really isn't as necessary as they thought it was. So they're not going to wash their hands but once a day. <laughs> that's Maybe that's a bit of a bizarre and an extreme example, like I said, but in a hospital setting, there has to be policies and guidelines that are stu stuck to and codes that are honored and not wavered unless, you know, until true evidence-based practice comes out that the policies can be changed. So uh, it's hard to say. I feel like a lot of times when I'm asked to choose one way or the other, I end up saying, well, I'd rather go with a little bit of each, and maybe that's okay. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that. But if you take the structure that's necessary from the vertical approach to ensure that things are done the way they should be, and if at the same time you can find a way to implement aspects of a horizontal approach that allow autonomy, responsible autonomy, I think is the key. I know, speaking from a nurse, as a nurse myself, that it makes you a lot more, a lot happier in your job. So you want to make sure everything's, are, everything's done correctly with it while having as much autonomy as possible. So that's my answer. I'd right or wrong, I'd say mostly I t tend to lead toward the vertical with as much horizontal as you can fit in there. Finally, when reading about organizational models, the greater social system I found attractive. Uh, it talked, it read about how the greater social system has caused healthcare companies, hospitals, organizations to focus on the actual care they're delivering. And to me, that means the population they're delivering care to. Um, they're trying to say, what is, what is our impact overall on the societal health? And the societal health, that sounds uh, lofty and like it's maybe floating up in the clouds, but that's not really what, it, I don't think that's what it means. It means what is the impact? Is the care we're delivering having the greatest impact on the people in our neighborhoods and our communities? And one thing it's done, I was reading on page 139 in chapter 6, it's really helped change focus from uh, treating someone after they're sick to preventive care. So encouraging people to exercise, encouraging people to eat right, having classes for people to prevent diabetes, and maybe if they've already had diabetes, giving them classes to help them, uh, you know, reduce the complications. Uh, I think the focus on the overall picture, and I think the focus on preventive care is a really good thing. And that's why the greater social system, I believe, sounds like a good model. That's it for my blog post. Have a good day.